If God had to make signs to wake up the church, I don't think we could get more of a sign. This is more than any generation that we have seen. Well, what we know for sure is that uh, the Bible is going to be fulfilled. Every word of the Bible is true. And Daniel chapter 7, verse 10 is where we're going to head to. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand time ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. That's what we're heading to, aren't we? That's a heavy message. You don't want to hear that every single week because you need to live your life, raise your kids, go to work, all these things. I understand that. But just keep it in the back of your mind that we are heading towards a day of judgment, which I, I say the word judgment is so, um, is so judgmental. The word judgment is so judgmental. So people think it's a negative thing. But convert it to the day of justice. That sounds a lot better. It's the same word. All the evils of the world will be judged. Right? God will rectify all the wrongs in our lives, all the things that were done. As long as we, we have repented of our wrongs, because if we have not repented, guess what? All that justice falls on us. The heavy hand of wrath falls also on us. So the first way to prepare is make sure that your sins are forgiven, you have forgiven everybody else, you walk pure and clean, and then you would welcome the day of justice. And when the books are open, that means all the evidence is there, it's not going to be, well, God thinks this, He has that opinion. No, the angels have recorded everything said and done in public and in private. And I don't know how, but they're even recording our thoughts and our attitudes. So they're in the spirit realm. They're in another dimension. And those things are real to them. Just as a, a pulpit is real to us, a phone is real to us, somehow attitudes, love, generosity, stinginess, um, even laziness, uh, all these things seem very real, like a concrete thing in the spirit realm. So that's what's going to happen. We're gonna, they're going to open the books and we're going to see uh, what has been done on the earth and God will deliver justice. Now, before that comes, God has been very kind and He's given us kind of leading up to that great day because it's only going to happen once. So everything is building up to that great day of justice. We want to be forewarned. And God does that. And we gave a... Um, series of warnings all the way from 2014. Can you imagine? It's been 10 years about the lunar tetrad. What's going to happen? Of course, you saw ISIS. You know, people forget the things that have completely changed the world. But when ISIS came out and started beheading uh, journalists and Christians and, and in mass, you know, in, in a great line and burn people alive on YouTube, you know, we're desensitized to these things. We shouldn't be. These things are Horrible crimes. They're crimes that haven't even been dealt with in the International Criminal Code. They're just horrific things. So those things were fulfilled. Ukraine actually started in 2014. Something that's very important that probably is going to lead us into World War III, that started in 2014. And there were four lunar tet tetrad, blood moons that means, lunar eclipses on Passover, Sukkot, Passover, Sukkot. That was a great sign. And the reason, by the way, the reason it started in 2014 is because America sent, you know, its agents into Ukraine and ousted the democratically elected leader of Ukraine because we did not think that they were pro-American enough. So we were responsible for that and we say that, you know, Russia started it. No, we started it. Of course, you know, it goes in circles. People just, you know, keep perpetuating the war. So that was fulfilled. That was confirmed. And then now we have the solar eclipse that just happened on April 8th, 2024. And I said clearly that that has to do with Islam. I believe even the, the eclipse itself is a symbol of Islam. I explained that in another video. So we're not, we're not talking about that. But look at what's happening to America. You've got the, the brewing of a second civil war. People say, don't say things like that. But what do you see? Campuses all across the United States ignited in hatred. And ignited after... 1,500 Jews have been killed and more than 200 hostages taken. About 100 have been released. Another 100 are still there. Have you seen the, the documentary that just came out called Screams Before Silence? Wow. The things that they did to women, 
during those few hours. And babies, it's never even been thought of. It's not even been described. It's that barbaric. It uh, would send chills up your spine. And that's happening in our day and age. And we think, oh no, that's you know, old stuff, it's irrelevant, it's in the Middle East. No, that stuff has happened and that's the kind of stuff that's going to come here unless we get serious with God. It has already come and, and hundreds and th hundreds of thousands of people who are pro Hamas are here. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese military, they keep saying military age men, there's a reason they say that, are here. They're, 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 they consider America the enemy. And so that sign was given on the eve of the new year. So there's the Hebrew relationship. There's the divine relationship. It's on that calendar. And for 40 days, we're waiting for um, Pentecost. Because Jonah said, yet 40 days, and then Nineveh will be judged. So it seems like 40 days is the timeline, but it's already being fulfilled. You can already see the, the, the brewing of a civil war, but I think something dramatic is going to happen. You know, a, a, a weapon is set off or a, um, an earthquake is set off, is triggered, and then people, I hope they realize, hey, well, we've been saying this warning over and over. Let's get our lives right. Let's get our relationships right. Let's get, let's get faithful in church and ministry. You don't have much more time to, to serve, but we have time, but not much more. So this is the, it's a difficult thing for, for me because I want to preach the prophetic message, and yet my heart is as a pastor. I want to make sure that you, you, know, you feel loved and comfortable and, and you feel wonderful being in church, and yet you hear, on the other hand, I'm telling you, you have, if I'm right, three years to prepare. Three years is a long time to prepare, and it's a short time to live. So which way do you want to go? You still have, you have to live and enjoy life and, and, and hug the kids and go to whatever you want to go to, go to the beach and have fun. But you also have to allocate some serious time to God. How do we reach more people? How do we uh, pray? And, 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 and what if things are shut down again? You know, how would things shut down? I believe that climate change emergency is the next thing that they're going to do. They, it didn't succeed with COVID, which was the white horse. My timeline's very clear, the white horse, then the red horse then the black horse. And by the way, for those who, who don't even believe me, what did you see this week on TV? Two horses running, galloping on the streets of London, never been seen before. They call them the cavalry horses, which means the military horses. Military. And we're in the red horse. This is a time of war. So you see a white horse with blood on it, see a white horse with red, with a black horse galloping down, and it injures four people. A symbol of the four horses, the four stages of the timeline. And there are people who argue with me on this and say, it's not true, that's fine. You're going to prove me wrong very quickly if, if it doesn't happen. But everything is happening in exactly the timeline that God's given me. So we don't need to be right, we need to follow God. Right? We need to follow God. But you saw that. I've never seen that before. I've never seen that. Now, I asked the Lord, I said, well, why, you know, since, since you're proving that my timeline is right, like this is Bible prophecy for non-Bible readers. This is Bible prophecy for dummies. You know, we're talking about the red horse, the red horse, the red horse, it's here. And you see a white and red horse and a black horse. I said, Lord, why not all four horses? Why not the green? And the Lord said to me, they don't even know there's a green horse. They don't even know. We still, every video I put out, somebody who hasn't been educated, hasn't even gone through the video sufficiently, will say, Pastor Steve, there is no green horse. It's called a pale horse. Okay, in English, it's called a pale horse. In Greek, it's called chloros. How many times do I say this? Chloros is the root word of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the chemical that makes plants green. It's definitely green. And what do you see waving, the flags waving on all the campuses of the United States? 
you'd have to be dumb not to see it. You'd have to be blind. You see exactly those four colors I've shown for 10 years. White, red, black, green. White, red, black, green. And it's now on the streets. It's in, it's in London. And then Big Ben, here's another sign. Big Ben stops. Now I have, to, I have to confirm this because I get so much information coming to me, but somebody calculated that it was like 666 something minutes or seconds or whatever it was, like there was a 666 related to the Big Ben. Just stop. Big Ben's never stopped. Big Ben stopped for that period of time. While they're doing the pro-Hamas, you know, they say pro-Palestinian. Let's be real. It's not pro-Palestinian. There's no Palestine. It's pro-Hamas. The people who have just raped and brutalized women and children in ways that cannot be described. Other than, other than the victims and the survivors have a right to describe. But they'll show you in that documentary trees where the women were spread out and tied. One after the other. It wasn't random. It was not random. It was a planned act of violence. And the students in America support that. Where are we? And the church says nothing. You'll go to church that you'll go to a church that won't say anything about the biggest astronomical event that anyone will see in their entire lifetime, that total solar eclipse that goes over the United States on the right Hebrew, you know, day on the Hebrew calendar. If you go to a church and they don't mention that, you know everybody mentioned that. You could even go to a cafe on that day and they'll serve you eclipse coffee. And we, the church, God made the sun and the moon as signs for signs and for seasons, for signs and for Moedim, for the appointed times to meet with God. They were made for Him. And you come into church and they don't mention that, you're in the wrong church. Right? If this is disrupting life and, and the whole American way of life is being disrupted because of somebody waving white, red, black, and green, and that's exactly what is spelled out in colors in Revelation 6, and you don't believe Revelation 6 is going, is happening, I dare say you're in the wrong church. Can I say that? I mean, if it's that obvious now and you're still denying it, right? They say we're climate change deniers. We're whatever deniers. Well, they're deniers, aren't they? Deniers of prophecy, deniers of facts and truth. So all that to say, you know, I know you know that. If you follow me, you know that. But I was really happy to meet uh, Mark Biltz. And then he said that this is a season of war. And I was thinking, well, why does he think that? And I just wanted to add this. So Mark Biltz, I'll get him on, on our channel sometime, or I'll go on his channel, and uh, we'll, we'll talk. But we're in sync about this, but he came from it from another angle. So I thought, isn't that interesting? Two different prophets, two different you know, ministries in different locations. We're literally at opposite ends of the United States. He's on the West Coast, I'm on the East Coast. He's in the North, I'm in the South. And we're getting the same thing. So I thought, how did he get it? So here it is. I, I got the answer. I want to show you this. Now, I've added to it. He, he found out that lunar eclipses are judgments against Israel. The moon represents Israel. Even in the Bible, it talks about that. And the moon is smaller, isn't it? So it represents that one nation. The solar eclipse represents the Gentile nations. Brighter, bigger, all the rest of the nations. The 192 nations in the world, I think they change sometimes, you know. But around that, that number, represented by the sun and the, and the solar eclipse is judgment on the Gentiles. Lunar eclipse, judgment on Israel. Well, guess what? He found two of the lunar eclipses that are coming up happen on Purim. Purim, which is the war, you know, the Haman... The Persian, which is now Iran today, Iran trying to exterminate God's people, the Jews. That's the story. And on Purim, there's a lunar eclipse, I'll tell you, March 14, 2025, and then March 3rd, 2026. Both of them Purim, both of them have the lunar eclipse. I want to add, I'm going to tell him, he might add it in the book. I have found another lunar eclipse happened on March uh, 24th, 2024. And that's just happened. And that is also Purim. So there's a Purim in 24, 2024, 2025, 2026. And all three had lunar eclipses. 
Iran, Iran, Iran. This is not going to go away. This is, this is not Ezekiel 37, 38, if I'm right. Or 38, 39. 37 already happened. Partially, it's the rebirth of the nation. So if my timeline is correct, there's a lot of implication. It's not Ezekiel 38, 39 war. It's not yet the Gog and Magog war. It's not yet the financial collapse. So we can then prepare, you know, with, with a logical, um, what, what's the word? No, not in a panic. What's the opposite of panic? In a calm, collected way. That's what God is trying to do. But it's amazing how hard it is just to fight Christians and pastors. And I don't want to fight them. But we're saying, okay, I've got the timeline, Revelation 6. Now, you've got a timeline from multiple angles with Mark Biltz. You got the Purim lunar eclipses. Then he did something that I think this is, you know, the blessing that Mark has been to the, the body of Christ. He goes into such detail with, with um, you know, kind of Hebrew root stuff. So I want to show you this. So he's going to start from the total solar eclipse, April 8th, okay? And he counts solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, 2024 to 25. Then he counts another solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, lunar eclipse from 25 to 26. So you got two sets of rolling eclipses. And they happen to be on significant days, all right, for uh, the Hebrew calendar. So Nisan 1 is the new year. Elul 15, Elul is just the, the month of repentance. Uh, Tishri 1 is the civil new year. Adar 15, I'm not sure how he relates that, but these are the kind of like the last months in each calendar, the first and the last of each of the civil and religious calendar. A lot to explain if you don't know these things. Um, but anyway, just that's what he's done. And then it's also in the next set of four, so there's eight eclipses he's counting, all right? It happens in Nisan, Elul, Tishri, Adar. Then it's Nisan, Elul, Tishri, Adar. And you look at all that, and as a Gentile, what does it mean? What does it mean? Some of these are total eclipses. Some of them are partial. I'm not going to go through all this. But what he found was each month on the Hebrew calendar, not our Gregorian calendar, relates to a tribe. Each month relates to a tribe. Each tribe relates to a symbol. Like you can keep going. Each letter is a number. Each, each uh, letter is also a word or a meaning. So Hebrew has so much more meaning. There are layers upon layers of meaning in the Bible. So he just found this layer. It's very easy to understand. So the solar lunar, solar lunar eclipses will happen in Nisan, Elul, Tishri, Adar, 24 to 25, which corresponds to the tribe of Judah, Gad, Ephraim, Naphtali. Judah, Gad, Ephraim, Ephraim, Naphtali. You say, well, what's the big deal? What has he found? When you go to Numbers, Numbers chapter 10, see what, what uh, verse we've got. Well, he doesn't tell you a verse, but Numbers chapter 10, you're going to find that God tells the marching order of the tribes when they go out to war. What are the chances of that? That the four eclipses go in, appear in the months that are related to the tribes in the order they go out to march for war. Get out. I know. Get out. And not only does it happen once from 2024 to 2025, it happens again from 25 to 26. So this for him is the confirmation why he wrote a book about it and said, for sure there's coming a war. And for me, it's not just a war. It's global. A series of wars. Again, these are pre-tribulation signs. This is not the end of the world. So if you're stressed, I want you to relax. If you're relaxed, I want you to increase your stress a little bit. Okay? I want you to, to be, sense the urgency a little bit more. Don't live like you got forever and ever. We got time, but not forever. So what it means is for three years, and somehow he also got the next three years, it's going to be, you know, um, just acts of terror and rumors of war all over the place. And our job is to hear God so that we're in the right places at the right time. You don't want to be at the wrong place and then say, God didn't protect me. God didn't take care of me. No, you, you really want to be hearing God right now. So there may be a fantastic business opportunity, but it's in some place where the nuclear silos are and they're going to get bombed and you didn't think about it. Well, that would be a, a grave mistake just for money. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you're not making decisions just for money. If you got some money, you need to make decisions to make sure that you're supporting the kingdom of God now.
That's what I would do. That's what I would do. You're, you're allocating things differently. You know, like if you're thinking about your will, your inheritance, you think a bit differently. So you got, you're coming towards the end where the books are going to be open, everybody's going to be judged. How would you like to be judged? How would you like to go out? And I'm, I'm preaching that you'll be protected, you can be safe, but you've got to really walk close with God during these times. I believe in God's love and protection. I do. All right? So he came at it from, from that angle, and uh, maybe I'll put up a slide and give you all the dates and all that. But Numbers 10 is very interesting, so I want to end this kind of little bit of, you know, I told you so, the horses are galloping in London, the, the pro-Hamas agents, they're basically setting up Hamas camps um, among the universities. That's already happening. It's not even 40 days up. It's already happening. It's basically confirmed in front of you again and again, even when you don't want to see it. It's coming. The horses are galloping. So Numbers 10 is very interesting because it ends in a very strange way. And again, only in Hebrew it tells you this. But Numbers 10, about the, the order that the tribes are supposed to march out to war, it ends like this, verse 35 to 36. And it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered. And let them that hate thee flee before thee. That's good, isn't it? It's a verse about victory against the enemies. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. So it's got in that one chapter and in the ending of that chapter, both the rise up, O Lord, which is the resurrection of Jesus, and the words, Return, O Lord, which is the second coming of Jesus. It's a very end time thing. If you understand prophetic language, you know that those words are not happenstances. Whenever you hear, rise up, whenever you hear, return, it has a prophetic implication. It's not just for that moment where they're fighting some enemy that they see at that time, in that location. It has a wider, broader prophetic meaning that applies to the end time. The Lord has risen up and the Lord's going to return. And in this verse, what, again, Mark so good at this, he said that that verse is the only place in the Torah that is bracketed by a nun. Now, you remember I've been telling you the nun, the nun het, the 5-8, is an end-time number. It means Noah, as in the days of Noah, and when you flip it, it means grace. Het nun. It's 5-8 or 8-5. It means Noah or grace, as in the days of Noah. So you get the days of Noah bracketing this, the nun nun, and it's the only time. So these letters are there, but they don't get translated into English. Not only that, they're upside down and they're flipped. So the nun in Hebrew means fish. The fish symbolizes the Christians. The Christians are backwards and flipped. What does that mean? Well, he has a positive meaning. I think you don't want to see dead fish. Dead fish is not good. So it looks to me like flip and, and upside down means persecution of the Christians. That before the end, before the return, there's a great persecution of the Christians. It will intensify in the tribulation, but it begins now. And you can see, you know that Biden is now proposing a, a new uh, regulation or law that would take away, that would attack nonprofit status. He's coming, he's coming for the church in one way after the other. And he's telling, you know, Ukraine's already burned down, uh, closed down churches that are not state-sponsored churches. They don't have an election, and they persecute Christians, and they don't have any journalism going on other than state-approved journalism, and we are supporting that country, which is supposedly supporting democracy. What kind of democracy? Has no election. Persecutes the church, and shut down the, all the opposition parties, no opposition party left, and there's no independent media left. It's all state-sponsored. And we just sent them, 90, we just approved $95 billion to go to them, which goes into the pockets of all the military industrial complex and the politicians that get the lobbying money. It's an incredible money laundering scheme in front of our eyes. If we did anything that Congress did, if we did a fraction of what Congress does, we'd all be in jail. And they do it. They violate the Ten Commandments in front of our eyes. So it's, it's troublesome time, I understand. It's not nice to hear this. But just be aware so that you can pray in a targeted way and then you know what to do. Now, Mark says, the dead fish, two dead fish flipped upside down could also be, I guess, it's a sign of maybe the rapture, maybe the resurrection. Okay? 
But I, I want to even be, even if it's a rapture, I don't want to go feet first. I want to go head first, okay? So I don't like this flipped upside down uh, two fishes around that verse. But it's there. It's very strange, very unusual. And you only see that if you pay attention to the original languages. So I'm sorry to tell you the original language, language of the Bible is not the King James Version. It cannot be. And I love quoting from the King James. I'm a, you, know, I, you could call me a King James guy. I prefer the King James. But I'm not going to go so far as to say ignore the original language. That doesn't make any sense. So we're living in, um, in the fulfillment of prophecy. And that's exciting. That means that God trusts you. He trusts you. He trusts you to be intelligent to get this. He trusts you to be courageous, to not be afraid and not to become a coward in the end time and think, what do I do to hide from all this? No, we're going to try to help people. We should store up a little bit. For many years, I've been advising people to prepare by having at least a month's worth of food and water. And I've tried several long life food products. And uh, I've chosen one that I think is the most organic. Uh, that I can find for myself and my family, and it's called New Manna. So if you're looking for long life food, it's called New Manna. And we have a very dedicated uh, link for this, newmanna.com slash Pastor Steve. All right? Their tubs will last 25 years on the shelf, and I not only store it, but because I find it's good quality and it's organic, I actually eat it when my fresh produce uh, run low. So if you use the promo code Pastor Steve, you will get 10% discount. New Manna is owned and operated by Christians who support this ministry and other ministries when you purchase it. So that's why I'm willing to let you know that's what I use, right? Newmana.com slash Pastor Steve. I hope that will help you to prepare uh, at, least for a, at least for a month, at least. At least have something. If the internet goes down, the grid goes down, something unexpected happens, at least a month. Like, that will keep you going. Then you can decide what to do. You're going to bunker down, then you need more. You're going to move then you got some supply. All right? Okay, God bless you.